Traders, Gary Wagner here, approximately 10.30 in Honolulu, 4.30 in New York on Thursday, 17th day of October 2013, and this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver, averting a potential default on our bills in the United States. Congress, the Senate, and the President uh, unanimously passed a bill to extend it, kick the can down the road, at least kick it down the road until January and February of next year. But that, of course, led traders to believe that there is really no possibility of tapering this year. And the thought is that tapering might not begin till the middle part of next year. We don't have any reports out yet, but the effect on the precious metals markets is dramatic, is strong to the upside. We are looking at two charts. On the left-hand side, we have silver. Right-hand side, we have gold. These are both half-day Japanese average charts. And what I'm doing is I'm using these to define if we had a true and utter breakout to the upside. We can absolutely say with some certainty that we did in fact get a sizable, sizable breakout to the upside as gold has moved up $38, up about $38 right now, 1320, the high 1326, the low 127440. As I said, that puts it up about 3% on the day. Silver is trading up about 2.3% three percent on the day it is trading half a dollar higher 21.88 low 21.02 the high 22.31 you can see that it has absolutely broken above this upper level resistance line but it's just trading slightly above it as opposed to gold which is a clear and utter breakout when we look at it now we'll talk about our strategies because obviously this took us by surprise because this happened for the for the most part in overnight trading i looked at it all morning to see if we'd get any kind of a pullback for an entry we have not had that yet i'll look at the evening session tonight and tomorrow morning to see if we get any kind of dip if we do, we're going to enter the market from the long side. We're going to place our stops just underneath this resistance line, which at this point, if we're going to get a true and clear cut rally, will become support. And we'll, we'll talk about that with the other charts that we use in today's show. Now, although I do expect a little bit of backfill, in other words, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes down a little bit. That's where we would look to enter. When we analyze the most recent patterns that we have seen especially in candlesticks we have a very very rare pattern that has formed and i wanted to spend a couple of moments and go over that with you and i'm talking about really these three dojis you know as we got closer and closer to the deadline this of course continuous contract of the comax we had these three dojis right in here of course a doji is simply a day on a daily chart in which the open and close are either identical or very very close the other thing about a what's called a tri-star bottom and that's this pattern right here it can be identified by the fact that you have three consecutive dojis but their formation forms really a V. And so it's a, it's a very unique pattern. You will not see it that often at all because for it to really unfold as a tri-star bottom, you really have to have three days where you're, you're getting a pivotal point, meaning that uncertainty in the market. Typically, when you get a doji, you'll get a doji at the bottom or a top. Sometimes it's simply a resting area. And it tends to be the resting area where you get the clusters of dojis. But when you get these small bodied candles like you can see here or here, they're typically single candles and not in the tri-star formation, which is really so very, very rare. And that's these three candles here. Of course, to take that call, you would have to get a confirming candle. You absolutely got that. You're getting a green candle with an extremely higher high, a higher low, and it's a long green body. So it has everything in terms of the definition in terms of candlesticks that would define a breakout, a pivotal turning point, and a real bottom, at least tentative bottom in the market. And that's what's gotten me so excited about this most recent move. Even with this $40 move, if the market is going to truly break out and move to the upside, there's still a lot of room. We've certainly not missed the, the trade itself, but there's a couple of things that we wanna be 
real cognizant or aware of as we look to enter this trade. Now, the first thing is going to be basic trend analysis from a, from a longer standpoint. This is the daily chart that we have used. We talked about the fact that we had this much longer upper level resistance. That's not this resistance line that we've used to determine there's a breakout. And we also had these series of higher lows. We broke below, we then broke above. And of course, this point is extremely significant where it found support. We'll talk about that on the next chart. But we have gone straight up to the upper levels of this support line, which once it broke through is now resistance, just as this should now be support. And we can see that it's just up to that line, but not through it. So a move through this line would be a greater confirmation, of course, that we have truly, truly found at least for the short term, a bottom within the market. No doubt a fascinating day in the market. This market has really taken off very, very strongly. Right now, I am pegging support at roughly $1,300. 1302 is my shorter term 14 day moving average and that's where this 1302 is coming from. More importantly, what we talked about yesterday was the fact that we're probably in this big wave five, but wave five is going to be a series of moves. We've had this down move. I suggested that we would see the market trade up to maybe, well, for 1330 right in that area and then possibly come down as a continuation of this fifth wave. Now, in no way did I expect that activity to happen in one day and to happen in overnight trading. We talked about the fact that we're probably gonna see a nice bounce in the market. We certainly got that bounce today. And my sense is that we have a really, really strong level of resistance. It's gonna come in around 1340. We have another one that comes in at around 1370, I believe 75. It's blocking this one number, but 75 in there. Those are our two real next levels. If in fact we see this market continue to gather steam. And my sense is that because the belief now is that we're not going to see tapering this year, you will probably see gold slowly build a base you will probably see gold slowly move back to higher prices. And the question is, is whether or not we will move from a basic bear market back into a bull market because a lot of the, the bear activity was predicated on the fact that the Fed would change their monetary policy, their, their, their loose monetary policy, I should say, to a policy in which they were not as accommodative to or, or in the way that they had been. And so once that perception changed and really changed yesterday, there was a fundamental shift and that's why we got this $40 swing. As I said, I am simply looking for some sort of a pullback to enter into the market. But if it continues to rise, we'll probably want to what we call scale in. In other words, put in a part of our position, maybe a third or a half. If the market dips, we can dollar cost average to get a little better price. If the market continues to rally, we can add at uh, very, very significant points in the marketplace itself. So in terms of the defined levels of resistance by different parameters, there's a couple of different retracement that, that I talked about. One of the primary ones that I want to look at is the last rally, 1181, 1435, 50%, 1306. We have taken that out. We are just but up against a 76% retracement. That is another sequence that I will have to define by compressing the chart so you can see it. And then the 38% of this rally is 1336 and 1373 is the upper level, the 23%. So if this market continues in an upward channel, expect a little bit of resistance at 25, 36, and then 73. And if you recall from yesterday's show, we were using this chart, and I believe that on this chart, we talked about an A, B, 
C. We talked about the fact that we're probably in a fifth wave, but that fifth wave will probably have a nice little spike up before it continues down. At worst, we're getting that spike up. In other words, even if we are in a bear market, we haven't shifted back to a bull market, this little pop up should be a nice little rally considering the really significant sell-off that we had following this first primary rally from 1181 up. At best, what we could see is an actual turning point from bear to bull. And the reason that I believe that that's actually possible is because we have been working under the premise that tapering is imminent and about to begin, and that has really drastically changed. The other thing that is fueling the, the precious metal fire, so to speak, is the fact that although we resolved our issues in the United States, we did it in a tremendously sloppy and terrible manner. We let it go to the 11th hour. We've shown the world the disunity in our government and between members of government. And we really showed the inability to come up with a eloquent or adequate solution to the issues it faces. All we simply did is kick the can. Now, unlike what happened last time where automatic sequestering came in, we have not dealt with the debt problem or the budget deficit that we have currently. Raising the debt ceiling, of course, is necessary to pay everyone, but at the same time, to get our budget in check, we haven't shown the ability to work together as a team between the Democrats, the Republicans, and the president, and all work together to come towards some common solution because they are so polarized in terms of their current view of what is best for the United States and the United States people. So as I said, I would look for the market to move back up. It could still come down. We still have not gotten any technical evidence that we've gotten out of the bear cycle, but this is certainly, if in fact we are going to be exiting at the bear cycle and moving into a bull cycle, this is how that pivot would look. So we'll, we'll have to see how it unfolds. So what about silver in this or whole ordeal. You know, it has obviously reacted differently, but the one thing that we can say is that we have had a genuine strong level of support, call it a 21 or 2080 right in that area. Market's trading almost to $22 right now. And we've had this dramatic rise in price off of that bottom. We saw it building a base over the last week or so. Now, just as with gold, the next levels in terms of resistance, if we see this market continue to move up, this is the 2080 that we spoke about. And of course, the 2080, when we look at the last rally, this corresponds to gold moving 1181, 1435, 18 to 25 plus, 61 percent holds, forms a base. 50 percent, 2161, we're trading well above that. This is our current print and this is our current high, this is standard candlestick. Our next real level of resistance in silver is called a 2250. You can see these tops here. If the market continues to rise, this is where we could find a little bit of resistance. And following that, the next real level of resistance on top of that is going to be call it 2350. Most interesting day, it's great to see this market move up. I wish I could say that we put out a buy signal yesterday, we did not. This happened overnight. But as I said, I believe that there is still a tremendous opportunity. And whether we enter this market long from a break or a continuation to the upside or hopefully a dip in the market to give ourselves a, a little bit better of a position, I think that we're going to have a great trade under our belts as we position ourselves accordingly. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow for the weekly wrap-up. Bye-bye.